Hi, welcome to Inspiration Daily for January, oh, January, for February 13th, <laughs> 2022. I'm Gina Greenlee. Hey, your host. And my website is ginagreenlee.com. So today's inspiration is old school American musicals. So I've lived long enough to see the evolution to experience the evolution of the great American musical. So, uh, you know, I, I, I love, I love Rogers and Hammerstein. They're, I really, I've loved it. I've loved their work ever since I was a little girl. I grew up on their work. So that was in the sixties. I mean, they were making musicals in the forties and fifties. And then when I was born, so in, and was a child in the sixties, uh, those were the, those were the musicals that were still popular. And then there was, um, then we move into the period of, um, Sunheim, uh, and Leonard Bernstein and, you know, Sunheim is, you know, so Rogers and Hammerstein are, are credited with the, with, the sh one of the shifts in, in American musicals. And then there's Sunheim who died not so long ago. Well, he was, I think he was 90 or well into his nineties. And, um, there was that period and, and then there were periods of, you know, then, the, then the, there was a touch of, uh, making musicals out of popular films. You know, I think of the whiz, uh, the Wizard of Oz, and then there was, you know, the black version known as the Wiz. Um, and then something happened. <laughs> it was the 1990s and there was a shift again, you know, the culture changes, um, generations come, generations, um, generations go, new generations are born and they come of age and they bring their view of the world and along with that their their art and what they what they create and so i was uh i was in my 30s i believe when rent came out i was uh so i grew up in new york city going to broadway and um uh and so i remember when rent came out and it was a big thing. I was living in Connecticut at the time. So I was only an hour and a half North of, of Manhattan. So, um, my, I was living in an artist uh, community, an artist colony. And so my neighbor who was a fabric artist and I, you know, it was every, it was, Oh, rent, rent was all the rage. Okay. And, uh, everybody got to see rent. It's like the new hot thing. And, uh, my mother was an opera singer, so I also grew up, um, unlike most teenagers, teenagers knowing uh, the names and the plots and the arias of of, of serious uh, operas of you know, uh, such as Puccini and um, others, of course. Now that I can't remember, but uh, but La Boheme was the template for uh, the storyline of Rent updated to reflect uh, what was happening, uh, how, how young people on the Lower East Side of Manhattan, uh, young people in Manhattan, in New York City, were, were experiencing the AIDS, the early days of the AIDS epidemic. So, so at this point, uh, when AIDS did uh, show itself, it was the uh, and I was living in New York City and I was a, I was a young woman then and it was it was the late 1970s actually and it was a very scary time you know uh, we've gone through another you know we've most recently gone through a pandemic and. So this, this was, it was, a, you know, so we know for those of you who are not old enough to remember when AIDS first showed itself, um, it was, 
living in New York City was one of the uh, it's one of the epicenters, one of the urban epicenters of of the virus, and um, so and on the West Coast, you know, San Francisco. So I was actually a late. I was in my late teens, and I was just just entering my my twentieth year of life when AIDS showed itself and um, in a big way in New York City, and it was uh, it was very mysterious and it was very terrifying. It was very sad, and um, so now so now fifteen years has has gone by, and I'm in my mid thirties. And I'm not living in New York City anymore, but rent comes out. The template for it is is the the Opera La Boheme. And so I buy as a, as a gift to my neighbor because she had been very helpful to me when I came into this art community. You know, I bought her a ticket, and because I had a day job, I was an artist, but I had a day job. <laughs> in the corporate world. She didn't have a day job. So I treated her to a ticket to rent and we, you know, head down to New York City. We drive to New Haven. We jump on Metro North. We get to Broadway. And I'm sitting there, you know, in orchestra, you know, and I'm and she's just I, I kind of get a glimpse of her out of my side eye and she's just enthralled. And I'm I'm confused. <laughs> I'm hardly confused because, because, you know, I'm now 35 years old at that time. And I, and I grew up with a very different Broadway, right? Roger, you know, Oklahoma and Carousel. And, uh, and then of course there was Sunheim with West Side Story. I believe that was Sunheim. And, and then, you know, there was a whole Sunheim period with, um, uh, with contact not contact with company, you know, the whole idea of a themed, a show that had, that had themes that didn't have sort of a, a traditional narrative arc, you know, Sunheim was very, and remains, it was very experimental at the time. And, and so, so this was the new wave and, and it was speaking to, it was speaking to a generation, uh, 20, you know, 15 years younger than I was at the time. So I was confused. <laughs> I was like, you know, I grew up in New York City. I was an artist. I certainly appreciated uh, the evolution of, of different aspects of the arts, but it, it, it was, it was very different. You know, there was no, there, you didn't have the traditional scenery. You had this whole scaffolding type of thing. And even in West Side Story, though you had scaffolding, it was, it was representational. So the, the set design was not representational. It was, uh, it was rock. It was pop, but it was more, it had a rock vibe to it, which was new for me. Um, so it wasn't opera. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't Hammerstein. It wasn't Sunheim. It was this new thing which deeply resonated at the core of the generation toward which it was targeted. And I was not that generation. So I was sitting there going, what the hell? <laughs> it was, you know, and I, I, I remember thinking, okay, I'm old. This is, this is one of, this is a moment where I know I am old because I was, I was like, oh my God, it's so loud. You know, it was like going to a concert, a rock concert. And I, even when I was a younger woman, I didn't attend those because I didn't like the loud. I didn't, I, it was, it was too much for me. So I don't remember if there was an intermission or if they, I don't remember, but at some point, either intermission, and I think there was an intermission. I say to my, my companion, who is my neighbor, she's like, oh, wow, this is a, she says, what do you think? And I was like, I don't get it. <laughs> I was like, it's really loud. And it's, it, it was just, it, I don't know. I think I was just having this moment of, of feeling out of touch. And, uh, it's, and I, I think it'll be different now with, with, let's say millennials as millennials age, because they grew up with the ubiquity of, of, global connection because of the digital revolution, which I didn't have. 
So I think as millennials and, and the generations that follow them enter into new, uh, into their, into their advancing decades, as they advance into their, their, old, their elder years, uh, they, they will not, they will be connected to things just as I am now. I mean, I, I know, you know, like I, I know I have an awareness of what people in their twenties and thirties are into. I don't, I don't engage it, but I have a, an awareness of it. Whereas before the digital rev, revolution, you know, it was just like this thing appeared and you didn't, you, you, you couldn't sort of dip your toe into it by going on YouTube <laughs> or Googling it. So, so that was rent and that sort of changed everything. And then of course we had Hamilton and I remember now, so when Hamilton came out, I was in my fifties, you know, um, I know of rap music, but rap music does not, didn't come from my generation. So it was, it was a generation after me. So I, I didn't come of age with that music. Um, but I did recognize a kick butt um, alchemy of ideas of you know, using the, the, the form, the art form of rap, a revolutionary, uh, an art form that is inherently revolutionary um, to tell one version of the story of the, of one aspect of the American revolution. So all of that is context. And, uh, I have seen Al Hamilton when it was on the Disney thing. A friend of mine had, it was on the Disney channel. So I went to her house and watched it. And I, before that, I did get the, the soundtrack from the library and I listened to it five times. And uh, I think it is genius. It is genius. Um, I believe Lin-Manuel Miranda spent eight years writing it. And you can tell uh, because it is a tremendous, it, it deserves every accolade. And unlike when rent, uh, you know, was the, was the shift <clears throat> in the American musical, it was less shocking to my system. Hamilton was less shocking to my system because I had the internet. I could read about it. I could see snippets of it. I could see, uh, uh, you know, Lin-Manuel was at the White House doing, you know, the mixtape you know, the Hamilton mixtape. So I, I could, I could be spoon fed and I could, I could take the journey. I could take the pop culture journey as it was happening, as opposed to rent just happened to me. Whereas Hamilton was, was something that I could participate in culturally because of the ubiquity of the ubiquity of the, uh, the omnipresence, if you will, of this, of this digital medium. So, um, so that with that as context, I was in an organization and I was waiting for, I had ordered, they have a, a restaurant inside this organization and I was waiting for my Cobb salad with grilled salmon on top to be ready to come from the kitchen. And there was a, they have also, this organization has a theater inside of it and uh, where they give classes to the public and for other constituencies. And uh, there was a, I heard a voice and it is, I didn't, I didn't know who it was, but I heard a lyric and I heard musical notes that were very familiar to me. Um, and it was, um, and it went, if I loved you, da 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 dee da da dee da 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 da. Okay, so that's that's the few couple bars. It's from Carousel, which is Rodgers and Hammerstein, and a very unique Rodgers and Hammerstein. It was a, not a happy story. It was a story actually about an abusive uh, marital relationship, and. Uh, that's a piv that song is it's a pivotal duet in the the Rodgers and Hammerstein uh, musical and I I'll put in the I don't know the exact date but it was before I was born and uh, but it's the music is beautiful I don't really care for the story I remember the first time I saw it I was like oh this is kind of rough but but the music is exceptional 
uh, the lyrics and of course the voices are, are incredible. And the version that I saw was with Shirley Jones and um, Gordon McRae, uh, who also co-starred in Rodgers and Hammerstein's Oklahoma. So, so I hear the lyric and I hear, and it, the voice, it's a baritone and the man is singing. And I thought, I don't know who the, I just was completely magnetized to the theater. The theater doors were open and I see this buff, handsome, dark brown brother singing this this incredible voice and I'm like who I don't even know who he was I didn't know who he was again I I sold my TV in 1990 I don't know who he was well his name is Joshua Henry and apparently <laughs> he uh co-starred on Broadway with a woman by the name uh, uh I think she's a soprano Jessie Mueller who again Broadway fans are going to know her uh in so this was a what do you call it? Um, what does he call it? What is it colorblind? I don't like that term colorblind, but it was, uh, you know, when Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote it, it was not starring a black male and a white uh, female. But Joshua Henry is a black male and Jesse Mueller is a white female. And so I'm, I'm just mesmerized by his singing. And then she starts and her voice is just gorgeous. And I started crying. It was just, it just, it, it was my Broadway. And as much as I appreciate Hamilton, as much as I appreciate Rent, and as much as um, probably more so now than I did at the time, um, and as much as I appreciate the evolution of culture and art, um, I had a very sentimental reaction to that lyric, to that uh, duet. And the inspiration uh, I just stopped and listened to it and it was, it was breathtaking. So I went home. So I, so I listened to what the facilitator, after she ran the clip and she, then she starts talking about the plot of carousel and, um, and how that particular duet really lays the foundation for the rest of the plot. I, I, I didn't, I couldn't get the name. I couldn't get the names of the principals who were singing, but I knew I could get enough of a description that if I put it into the, to the Google search engine, it would come up. And so that's what I came up with. I'm going to put that version of Rogers and Hammerstein's duet. If, uh, if I loved you in the, in the transcript box. So I have, I've always wanted to write a musical. I want to write everything. I want to do everything. I'm not going to live enough live long enough to do everything that inspires me. Oh, boo-hoo, but it is what it is. Um, so that's why I, I really want to, you know, carpe season <laughs> every day. I know it's carpe diem, but I like saying carpe season. So one, one time about 30 years ago, I, I dreamt a full musical and it was brilliant. Of course, when I woke up, I can only remember, I could barely remember any of it. And it was, it was a very sad moment for me. I actually cried then too. It was like, oh my God, if I had only could remember, but who can remember an entire musical? So, but I'm going to Google. I, when I saw Joshua, when I saw and heard Joshua Henry and Jesse Mueller on YouTube recording the soundtrack to, uh, the version of Carousel that they, that they starred in on Broadway, I thought, I'm, I'm going to try and write me a musical. Just, you know, and I, I know it's out there. You can you can just see what happens. You know, I'm inspired to say, I, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be produced on Broadway or whatever. I mean, I could write a musical performing in my living room. I don't know. Um, but I'm inspired to, to give it a shot. I Musicals are so much a part of my upbringing because my mother was a singer. Um, I studied voice. Uh, uh, I grew up in New York City and I took full advantage of Broadway, off-Broadway, uh, opera, Lincoln, Lincoln Center, all of the arts, all of the arts, ballet, the symphony, everything, Hayden Planetarium. I I was not one of those New Yorkers that bragged about not doing anything New York-y. Um, my parents who were not from New York took full advantage of the art Mecca that it was and exposed me to it. 
So uh, I have, I've always had a, a love affair with the, the great American musical. And, you know, I've also seen it go through this period where, you know, if it's a movie, then it becomes a musical or, you know, they take books and they turn them into musicals. And um, I struggle with the spectacle of that. Uh, but that, you know, that's just me. I don't, you know, that's just me. So, <laughs> uh, but, but the inspiration is Joshua Henry, Jesse Mueller singing the duet, If I Loved You by Rodgers and Hammerstein, uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel. And, um, and then I'm going to, I'm going to Google a link to how to write a musical and then I'll put it in if I, you know, when, not if, when I find a link that I find that's, um, you know, user-friendly, uh, I'll put it in the transcript box. Okay. Bye.